going to start the next topic uh, that is conformal transformation uh, in previous class uh, as most of you have not uh, attended that uh, we have covered the uh, encompasser flow over app file where last topics were uh, kelvin circulation theorem and starting vertex and uh, parallelly uh, i have given around three problems right based on app file characteristics Uh, so those who have missed that class, please go to the recorded video lecture as well as content already uploaded in CCR. So today we'll be starting the next topic that is called conformal transformation. Uh, so I think from mathematics uh, you may be knowing something about uh, the conformal mapping, right? So uh, using the complex potential function phi and i psi, uh, some idea will be there. What is conformal mapping? So it is uh, some sort of mapping in which uh, any uh, geometrical pattern can be converted to the entirely different pattern while the angle between the sides right like like two sides are at 90 degree they will still be at 90 degree so angle preserves while uh, you know one shape is getting transformed to the another shape in another plane such kind of mapping is known as conformal mapping so in aerodynamics basically uh, this is much needed uh, because we always take one reference uh, value and with respect to the reference value we make always uh, you know lot of uh, uh, observations and calculations so with respect to this point this coordinate system what will happen to the next coordinate system if the same point is moving so that kind of thing we are going to study in this conformal transformation uh, so here i'm starting the presentation so uh, what is conformal mapping or conformal transformation uh, so general definition for conformal mapping also known as conformal transformation or another name is given as allomorphic map is a transformation that preserves local angles so uh, usually till now from potential flow theory you know that if we want to simulate a flow we need to draw the lines and what are those lines stream lines and equi potential lines and we know that stream function and potential functions are orthogonal to each other so if we draw the pattern right for a given flow domain we can simulate exactly what is happening so so if let's suppose the local coordinates are x and y uh, in that two dimensional flow pattern you have drawn now if you want to go on global coordinates some other point right in transport coordinate uh, then the same geometrical pattern will be reflected but in a different way right but still uh, the the angle between the equipotential lines and the stream lines uh, will be 90 degree right so conformal mapping uh, is basically uh, much needed to understand uh, the behavior at different locations like right? different coordinate systems or how your flow behaves uh, so general definition uh, for transformation we can say it is the transformation in which one orthogonal geometric pattern is transformed into an entirely different pattern while the elements retain their distinctive form and proportion so oh, like uh, when we are simulating phi and psi that whatever we have drawn they will still be phi and psi and they will be uh, behaving orthogonal to each other but uh, the shape will be you know changing into entirely different shape in our transport coordinate so for example uh, consider the z plane that is uh, the local coordinate x and y y so if i say uh what is uh, basically z is that is nothing but x and i y so uh i will write here then you will come to know what is basically z is so so whatever z that you are uh, pointing out here is nothing but x plus i y so it is a complex function right where x represent the x axis along horizontal and y vertical axis so this is uh, basically uh, drawn here x and this is the i y so it, it is the z plane on a z plane any point uh, if you want to locate you must know the coordinate of x and y so let's suppose the point is p which is uh, represented by x and i y in a z plane now i want to you know transform this to another plane so i need to apply a transformation function so let's suppose from z plane to zeta plane i want to go so zeta is a function of z still so zeta is a function of z that i applied to this point then i can transform to to another point p des whose coordinates are xi and eta right so xi is represented as the x axis as on that plane and eta is representing the y axis of the 
is at plane and transport coordinate. So it has been transformed at another point P dash Z and I. So with the help of you know one transformation function, you can transform one coordinate from local to another uh, you know coordinate system of data plane Z and eta. So as a whole, uh, from this picture, it will be clear. So this is the two-dimensional Z plane flow pattern, right? Uh, so here uh, we have drawn the phi and psi. You look at this is the phi at constant two and phi at c three, and these horizontal lines represent the psi for the steam function. So this is getting transformed to the another plane that is called W plane, whose coordinates are u and v. V is the vertical coordinate, u is the you know horizontal coordinate. So even though shape got started, right? The same thing. Uh, what you line you are getting here is horizontal. Now it became the curve here, right? But still, but still, if you look at the pattern of phi and phi, they are orthogonal to each other. They are orthogonal to each other. So, so that's that's the speciality of this, uh, you know, transformation. So angle preserving feature is the essential component of conformal transformation. Even though the content, like if you want to calculate the lift here, the, the magnitude that you will be getting, the same magnitude you will be getting here as well. But this is in trans, uh, another, uh, you know, uh, coordinate system. The same flow pattern is getting transformed with the help of a transformation function that is zeta is equal to function of z. So, what are the properties of transformation? First, an important property is orthogonality is retained, right? So. If phi and psi at 90 degrees, they will be still be at 90 degrees. So uh, the first important point is orthogonality is rated. Second, the length ratio. So length is ratio nothing the length in data plane divided by length at z plane. So length ratio is defined as length at zeta plane divided by length at uh, z plane. So this can also be written as a d z divided by d uh, z. As we say that uh, zeta is a function of uh, z, right? Already we say that zeta is a transformation function which is a function of z. So if you differentiate this with respect to z, you can get f dash z. F dash z over here. So this is called length ratio. Next one is velocity ratio. So like we define the length ratio as length in zeta plane divided by length in z plane. Velocity ratio can also be defined as velocity in theta plane divided by the velocity in z plane. All right, so velocity at z plane, right, at any point is given by uh, dw by dz. So whatever w, now what is the w? So w is basically, uh, I will be writing here, w is nothing but phi plus i psi, right? This is known as complex potential function. Complex potential function let's note it down so with the help of this complex potential function i can get the velocity component right so if i differentiate this with respect to either x or with respect to y or just uh, with respect to z i can get velocity component so so dw by dz is known as velocity component right or velocity in a z plane that is nothing but u and iv u and I V so U minus I V we can write so when you are differentiating it so just differentiate with respect to X so if you are differentiating with respect to X you will get do phi by do X here right and here do phi by do X do phi by do X is known as U and do phi by do X is known as minus V right so that is coming over here so U minus I V this is the equation number one in a Z plane. Uh, similarly, uh, we can write uh, velocity in zeta plane that is nothing but dw by d zeta, right? So I said that zeta is a function of z again because already we know that is a transformation function. So if we differentiate this also with respect to zeta, we will get another velocity component, right? u bar minus i v bar. So this is equation number two. So if we divide this divided by this, we, that will get the velocity ratio. So velocity ratio is nothing but the velocity in z plane divided by velocity in zeta plane. So that is known as velocity ratio. So velocity ratio is given by q z theta divided by uh, q z. So this is known as dw by d z d zeta divided by dw by d z. So dw and dw will cancel out. You will get d z divided by d zeta. 
and this is what basically this is known as length length ratio reverse of the length ratio is equal to 1 divided by length ratio so velocity ratio is inversely proportional to the length ratio so if you know the length ratio you can find out the velocity ratio for the conformal transformation all right so so length ratio is given here right uh, l zeta divided by l z so velocity ratio also can be defined as velocity in zeta divided by velocity in z so velocity at zeta you know dw by d zeta and velocity in z you know dw by d z if you divide these two terms you will get the velocity ratio so when you are dividing that uh, you found that it is inversely proportional to the length ratio so this is the one thing next one what what is the singularity singularity means the point at which your function is give, becoming zero means you are going to differentiate your uh, zeta that is a function of z that will become zero right exactly at singularity point right so as we know zeta is equal to function z so if we differentiate that we will get f dash z dz right so or you can say f dash z is equal to d zeta divided by d z all right so the singularity is nothing but the singularity is defined as at which this uh, d zeta by d z is equal to zero or infinity just keep in mind so this value will either will be zero or infinity in any transformation that is known as singular points or we can say singularities singularity so singularity is the point at which this f z is equal to either zero or infinity which is known as singularity point in the transformation uh methods of performing transformation how to carry out the transformation there are basically uh three methods right by which you can perform the transformation one is the simplest one right one is the simplest the transformation that is called simple transformation so simple transformation as we know zeta is equal to fz uh, right uh, so so as we know zeta is equal to fz that is nothing but xi and i eta transform coordinate right and uh, if we equate this right if we equate this and and by taking the real and imaginary part separate we can write two equations out of this right as we know zeta is a function of z right and so xi will also be considered as function of z and eta can also be considered a function of z and that is that is basically x and y so so from this we can say that xi is also function of x and y eta is also a function of x and y so any point in the z plane this is the z plane right here it is the z plane so any point in z plane will be represented by x and x and y so this can easily be converted into the another coordinates of xi and eta because we know xi is a function of x and y also and eta is also a function of x and y so for a given value of x and y we can find out the xi and eta coordinates and we can represent over the zeta plane we can represent over the zeta plane so this is why looking at the coordinates we can simply transform one point from one plane to another plane that is called simple transformation simple transformation second one is uh, analytical method right analytical method is slightly lengthy so how to do the analytical method first you look at the uh, you know flow pattern in the z plane so flow pattern in the z plane will give you the information about the uh, streamline right so you can write the streamline equation right out of that flow pattern which is in z plane so one equation will be getting from the uh, streamlines right and the second equation you will be getting y expanding your uh, what we say uh, zeta that is called transformation function that is a function of z from there uh, you will get two equations one equation for the streamline two equations for xi and eta so you will have three equations if you uh solve those three equations you will come up with the solution right to represent xi and eta in a that plane right so one equation you are getting from the stream function so that is psi is equal to constant this is one equation right then you have expanded the zeta is equal to f that that is nothing but xi plus i eta so you got xi also and eta also two more equations so you can write in this way so psi is equal to constant is a one equation that is also a function of x and y and xi is a function of x and y and eta is also another function of x and y so you got these three equations all right so once you uh, know all these three equations any one of this either you isolate uh, xi or eta all right uh, and uh, by putting the value of x and y you can 
form one equation and from that equation you will predict the nature of uh, you know steam lines in the transformed plate transformed plate uh, so from this equation gy eta can be isolated to get the equation of transform line in eliminating x and y next last one is graphical method graphical method uh, is similar like a simple transformation so here a point is given by z from this we can form the transformation function gy that is called a uh, function of z to locate the point to locate the point so any point is given x and y from that we from that we can find out the theta right is a function of z so one equation we can get and from this equation we can find out the coordinates of xi and eta the point we know xi and eta we can locate the similar point on transformed plane so what are the importance of conformal transformation in aerodynamics that is a basic question so the main use of conformal transformation in aerodynamics is to reduce a complicated flow pattern to a simpler one or the one which is very easy uh, for the mathematical treatment so by using very simple equations you can easily predict the nature of the flow or right, nature of the flow pattern for that purpose we use the conformal transformation so we will see some examples uh, so take the first example right which is given here the transformation function is given as z plus v square y z where v is equal to constant find the length ratio and corresponding velocity ratio so uh, theta is given right so theta is a transformation function and uh, it's a function of z so z plus v square y z one transformation function is given and from this you need to find out the length ratio so what is the length ratio length ratio is the ratio of length in theta plane divided by length in uh what do you say is that plane right so or in other way we can say length ratio is equal to d theta divided by dz right usually we say so length ratio uh, is nothing but d zeta divided by dz and modulus of this right you will be uh, calculating as length ratio so you know the zeta right you just you differentiate this with respect to is said and find out the modulus right and uh, to to find out the length ratio it's a very simple thing so you are calculating d zeta y dz right that will come like this so if you differentiate this equation this will be 1 minus b square y z square right that you got like this now z in terms of polar coordinate can be written as r into e to the power i theta r into e to the power i theta just replace here in place of z r into e to the power i theta so whole square so if you rearrange you will get like this e to the power minus i to theta then e to the power theta you explain that is known as cos theta plus i sin theta here it is negative so cos to theta minus i sin to theta you can write right uh, in place of e to the power minus i to theta so you got d zeta divided by d z is equal to 1 minus this term minus i sin to theta so length ratio will be the modulus of this that's the first answer of two here any doubt no sir okay so note down this right even though ppt will be coming but you note down because next numerical will be going in this way only so so modulus of this you can find out like that right so real imaginary part you separate out so whole square plus this is imaginary part whole square under root right so if you solve this you this equation this is known as the length ratio and velocity ratio is inversely proportional to the length ratio so next one is velocity ratio which is nothing but 1 divided by the length ratio so whatever length ratio you got here Uh, one divided by this value will give the velocity ratio. Clear. Yeah, so this is very simple application, right? Uh, by which you can find out the length ratio and velocity ratio for the given flow pattern. Take this problem. Uh, find conformal transformation of this to a uniform flow parallel to x-axis. So you have been given a transformation function which you are applying to a uniform flow parallel to x-axis, and then then you have to predict how what will be the final flow pattern is. All right. So zeta is equal to one y z is given that is transformation function that is going to be applied on a uniform flow parallel to x-axis. 
right so we'll see what will happen uh, so how to start with the so we will write zeta is a function of z right zeta is a function of z which is given by equation 1y z and z is x plus i y so this can be written as 1 divided by x plus i y then you multiply and divide by x minus i y right usually 1 y z was only this term and now with this you are multiplying and divide by x minus i y divided by x minus i y so if you multiply this inside you will get this term so x divided by x square plus y square minus i y divided by x square plus y square that is equal to xi plus i eta because zeta is equal to xi plus i eta now equating real and imaginary part right you will get two equations basically one is for xi another for eta so so you can write from here equating real and imaginary parts you got xi is equal to this and eta is equal to this these are the two equations and third equation will be coming from uniform flow parallel to x axis right which is given and we are applying this so you got xi and eta right from this equation simple equation one by z uh the next equation we have to uh, take from the streamline for the uniform flow and for uniform parallel flow what is the psi usually we write psi parallel to uh, uniform parallel flow along x axis what is the value of psi that is called u into y right u into y which is constant so for taking the flow pattern due to uniform flow parallel to x axis that is given by u into y which is also a constant So constant, uh, I am writing capital K. So from here, I can write y is equal to psi divided by u, which is a constant. So I got the value of y from this. Y is equal to K. So this is the third equation, right? These two equations are here, and third one is here. We have to utilize these three equations to find out uh, the resultant. Uh, flow pattern. Okay, so we got these three equations. We can write here y is equal to k. This is one equation. Z is equal to x upon x square plus y square. This is the second equation. And eta is equal to minus y divided by. This is the third equation. Right. So now we have to eliminate either x or y. We know y here. Right. So better you do one thing. Uh, what we will do? Uh, we will find out the x also from here. Right. Uh, Means from eta equation, and we we'll substitute into the zeta. So just focus on this equation. From here, I want to know what is the value of x. So just you rearrange the terms. You can get x from this equation as under root minus y upon eta minus y square. So this value you got from the equation number C, right? So now you know the x in terms of eta, right? Now substitute this value of x over here in z, right? And also the value of y in terms of k in this equation, that is equation number B, that we are going to use where we are putting the value of x as well as y, right? If you substitute over here, uh, what you can do? If you are substituting over here in place of x, you can write this entire uh, thing that you are that you got from equation number C, which is here divided by uh, x square plus y square. Uh, that term is coming here. Y divided by eta. Now uh, you substitute the value of y also. Y is k basically. So in place of y, you put the k. So you got this equation, right? You got this equation. Now you rearrange the terms again. You must cross multiply and solve and put it equal to zero. That kind of equation you will be getting. So this divided by one and cross multiply. Uh, so if you do so, if you rearrange, you will get finally this equation. Y square plus e times square plus e. Y k is equal to zero. This equation you got. So this is a, basically an equation of circle, right? Look at x square. Z represent x x in coordinate transform coordinate. Eta represent vertical coordinate plus eta y k. So using and so divide and adding something here, you can form the equation of circle. So this is an equation of circle of radius equal to one by two k, and center at zero minus one by two k. So does the horizontal stream lines in plane one get transformed right uh, to circles of radius one by two k by applying the transformation function 
theta is equal to 1 y z so if we are applying theta is equal to 1 y z to a uniform flow in plane 1 finally it is getting transformed into the family of circles of radius 1 by 2 k in the uh, plane 2 or we can say in transformed plane so the pattern if you want to draw so this is x and this is y so in plane 1 right that plane it, it was the three stream flow parallel to x axis so all stream lines were like this right in z plane but they are becoming the family of circle right in z plane but center is on negative side you look at here zero and minus 1 y 2 k so all center will be negative y axis this side but this is a family of circles right so all these equations are uh, you know satisfying if you are putting 0 0 if you are putting z 0 and eta 0 the size is equal to 0 we are getting out of this so means all these stream lines right in transform plane must touch the origin point so all these circles are touching the origin points but their centers are moving on so we are getting family of circles in the eta plane right eta plane uh, if we are applying zeta is equal to 1 y z to a uniform flow in the add plane so this is the final flow pattern right we are applying this so up to here any doubt no sir uh so i hope next one you can try by yourself just go with this apply the transformation theta is equal to z square to a uniform parallel flow to x axis and theta is equal to z square in place of z you put x plus i y and whole square just open this bracket you will get this equation all right this is equal to z plus i eta right because zeta is z plus i eta we equate the real and imaginary parts so if you equate the real and imaginary part you will get these two equations one is for z another for eta so these two equation you got third equation will be getting from the stream function of uniform flow parallel to x axis so this similar like earlier case so the here also you will get y is equal to k right because Psi is equal to u i, so y is equal to psi divided by u, which is also a constant. So uniform flow x given by this equation, right? So we got these three equations, right? Out of this, so psi divided by u is equal to y, which is equal to k. This is one equation. J is equal to x square minus y square. This is another equation. Third equation is over here. Now what do you need to do? From the equation number four. Get the value of x, right? So x is nothing but eta divided by 2y, and from equation number one, you know the equation of y. So substitute the value of x and y in equation number three, like we did for earlier case as well. So solve in that way. Substitute the value. So from equation number two and four, basically this and this. From this equation, you get x in terms of eta. And from this, already you know y is equal to k, and so to do in the equation number three. So y is equal to k, and x is equal to eta y two k. So to do these two values over here, and so. So if you do so, you can get this. If you are substituting in equation number three, you can get this form of equation, right? So from here, find out the value of eta, right? So eta is equal to two k under root. Z plus k square, Z plus k square. Equation number four, with whole square on both sides. If you do the whole square of this equation, you can write eta square is equal to four k square bracket Z plus k square. Right, this equation you got. So, so basically, what is this equation? Uh, this is nothing but equation of uh, parabola, right? Because k is constant, k is constant, and this is just uh, you know x. So y square is equal to 4ax. Some sort of that equation it is forming, forming right? Y square is equal to 4ax, and that equation is known as the equation of uh, uh, parabola, parabola. And center will be on negative, negative y-axis. You look at here. Center will be means vertex will be at negative y-axis. So we can draw like this. So in z plane, these are the free stream flow, right, parallel to x axis. So if we are applying 
theta is equal to z square that is becoming the parabola this kind of parabola you will be getting so its vertex is coming on negative negative xi axis we call it at this negative xi axis all vertices will be forming here so flow will be coming like this right and leaving like this in the that plane and uh, theta plane at that plane is a free stream flow parallel to x axis yes any doubt in this no sir what uh, so i hope uh, you can you can go with this Just try this so like uh, you can get like this so two equations are as similar like uh, we did in previous uh, example as well and the third equation i is equal to ux is equal to constant so x is equal to k right you got so these are the three equations all right finally you get it so from this equation value of x and from this equation value of y right so we stood in equation number 2 so so x is equal to k and y is equal to eta y 2x if you substitute these two things in equation number 2 you will get this equation so from here we can write eta square is equal to 2k under root k square minus y right you got this equation so this is again the equation of uh, basically parabola right this is again the equation of parabola so we can say the uniform flow vertically upward in that plane gets transformed into parabola in theta plane but this time vertex will be on positive xi axis vertex will be on positive xi axis so we can draw like this so in theta plane that plane is the vertical flow right like this So psi one, psi two, psi three, we can draw. So this is uh, uniform flow, vertically uh, going up. That is getting transformed into the parabola, right? In the theta plane, whose vertex is on positive y-axis, positive y-axis, and flow is coming like this. Right, flow is going like this. So that is the uh, third case, right? Uh, that you have seen. So like that, you can draw. So any doubt in this? Yes, sir. 